Good morning, everyone. How are you guys this morning? And girls? Don't want to forget about the girls. Uh, looks like it's kind of more of the same. Uh, this morning, the NASDAQ just opened, and you can see it's been a rather... Uh, rather quiet in the overnight. And the market left off <laughs> right about here, around 46.06. And here we are starting in more or less that same region. So kind of a soft start to the, the day. Yesterday, of course, big rally day, right out of the open, and then the market consolidated a little bit, slight sell-off toward the end of the session. But really, it's summer. The market's a little bit... a little bit on the quiet side. So we'll see what, uh, what they give us. We are getting a first micro macro cross here in the Hawk. What time is it? Oh, shoot. It's only a minute after the market open. Uh, yay, yay. Do we want to try to jump in on this one? It is a high probability trade. Maybe what I'll do is we'll just throw a onesie in. I'll take it above the high. We'll cover below the low. Problem with entering this early after the market open is that a lot of times the market thrashes about a little bit the first few minutes of trading. And that thrashing about, if you're wrong, well, it can be a little bit on the expensive side. But the first micro macro cross signal is a high probability signal. If we leave ourselves enough room to realize a profit. I actually had an email from a, a DTS owner the other day asking about a first micro macro cross signal that didn't seem like it worked out. It worked out, but the market thrashed about a little bit too much before it could get to where it needed to go. Oh, great question here from Bill. Okay, Bill says, uh, I've got a packed day at work today, so I'll likely be out soon, but please discuss my question because I'll review it on the video on YouTube. Okay, Bill, here we go. And Bill says he also posted it at the Raptor Facebook page, so other members could have their input. If possible, uh, so... Bill asks, I've read posts and watched data available, videos and so on, and YouTube clips. Many people speak of, I didn't follow my rules. How are people developing their rules? Where do they start? That's an excellent question, Bill. Well, the rules usually start with stuff that people find works. And I found that journaling is a great way to find out what's working and what's not working. And by journaling, I don't mean just recording the, the entry, the stop loss, whether it was a profit or loss. I mean recording the reasons you took the trade. So on this journal entry, I would write, it's a first micro macro cross. I covered below the swing low because the market was very choppy. And we've hit our profit target. I'm going to try to run this one out just because yesterday had an early move out of the market. So I'm hoping for more of the same. 
So those are the kinds of things I would note in my journal. And what you're going to find out is that after a couple of weeks of journaling, and I would encourage you to keep a handwritten journal. It doesn't have to be fancy. I use a spiral notebook. <clears throat> Pardon me. I use a spiral notebook that I pick up at Walmart for a couple of bucks. And you're going to notice patterns, good and bad. You're going to notice things that you're doing wrong. Um, if you have a losing trade, those are really the ones that you, uh, that you learn from. I read a very interesting segment this morning. It was unrelated to trading, but the fellow wrote something to the effect of, you know, when I do something right, I feel like a genius. But it's when I do something wrong and I stand back and I say, what happened here? That's when I learn. That's when I learn from my mistakes. So I'm going to force this trade to break even here now. There we go. So I think when you have a trade and it doesn't work out, um, and you can stand back and look at your trade, and this might be a good spot to interject a page from my journal, and I should actually update this because this journal entry is about, oh, I guess it's four years old now. <laughs> this is from way back in 2012. Uh, and you're going to develop your own shorthand. And I record a few extra things now. This was, you know, what I did four years ago. Now I record a few extra things. But when I have a trade that loses, I tend to look back and try to figure out why did that trade not work out? And I'll put a great big star, and now my stars are even bigger than this. And if I see something that I did wrong, I try to learn from it. So in this case, I was trading against an obvious downtrend. It was the first micro macro cross. It was against a downtrend. So obviously my stop was too tight relative to the trade. I should have kept a more liberal stop. And here I didn't highlight this, but this is what I learned from this. There was no established trend yet. And it was too early. My signal. So as you go along and you journal your trades and you learn from your mistakes, you're going to develop a set of rules, things that you find work for you and things that don't. Some of the rules that we have for our tools, you know, we've already done some of the, the hard work for you, like the first micro macro cross, like the macro pullback here on the Falcon, we have the trend change signal, you know, so, and the late filter entry actually coincided. So we try to already do a lot of that heavy lifting and we look at the, the signals and the ones that are working and the ones that aren't working. And we try to say, okay, these are high probability signals. Let's focus on those. But that's how people come up with their rules. Uh, another rule for a lot of people will be uh, how they manage their trade. So on this one, I tried to run it out, and now the market may well come back and tag me at break even, in which case I left well over $100 on the table. So that may become a new rule for me that if I'm going to run a market out, make sure I take at least two contracts so I can take profit on one. Or, you know, if I keep getting tagged at break even, maybe my rule will be it. it's not worth it. Just take the profit when you have it. See, so for all my effort there, it was a great call, a strong move, and I got $5 for my effort. So a little something to help contribute toward the commissions and fees. But it's an excellent question. 
And I think most of the rules develop that way. People keep track of things that are working for them. They make note of the things that don't work. And then they trade accordingly. I also think that people who break their rules feel like they're trading by the seat of their pants. You know, they feel like they start chasing the market around. So, for instance, here on our hot trade, first micro macro cross, I get tagged at break even. There's a lot of traders right now who are saying, shoot, there's support coming back into the market. I'm going to buy it again. It's got to keep going higher. Well, no. <laughs> you know, the market doesn't have to do anything. It may well go higher. But one of my rules is I don't trade yellow bars on the hawk, except if it were a four arrow consolidation. How did I come up with that rule? I came up with that rule from trying to trade yellow bars, you know, in situations like this where the market just did not go anywhere. Well, this one was a four arrow consolidation. That one worked out. But you get the point. I remember one day Stephanie was hosting the Indicator Warehouse Room. This is years ago. And she felt like a rock star. Speaking of feeling like a genius, you know, she... She did everything right. The market was totally responsive. She was even trading yellow bars. And I think she walked out of the room that morning and she posted like a $2,000 profit or something insane. And she just felt, you know, I got this tiger by the tail. And then the next day, <laughs> I think she posted a $2,000 loss. And it was like, what's going on here? And, uh, you know, I spent some time with her and I said, why are you trading those yellow bars? And she said, well, they worked fine yesterday. Yeah, okay, they may have worked fine yesterday, but there's a reason I stay away from the yellow bars. And again, it, it was from, you know, the experience. So I think rules have a lot to do with that. Finding out what works. Don't trade by your gut. Don't trade by the seat of your pants. Let's see, now we're getting a... A trend change signal here in the Falcon. So we had the move up. There was that second little push. That's failing. And now the market's trying to head lower. Trying, the operative word. Now we're getting a second push on this entry. And again, this is how I came up with the second push entry. Is when the market's indecisive. Go ahead. Let the signal engage. Let it retreat. I, I know the limit of the market now. I can submit my order, and if the market chooses to fall off, well, it needs to show me some renewed momentum here, doesn't it? And if I get a couple green bars here, well, then obviously we've lost our downside momentum, and I'll scrub the trade. Uh, yellow bars on the Raptor, Bill says. Do you uh, stay away from those? No. The yellow bars on the Raptor are a little bit different because the Raptor also uses uh, the Falcon and Eagle as for gen uh, signal generation. So the bars will print yellow uh, showing that there's a, a shifting bias. But no, the yellow bars don't bother me as much on the Raptor. Now, I did say in the initial Raptor manual that I do stay away from yellow bars. But since then, a lot of uh, Raptor owners have shown me the error of my ways, and they said essentially the yellow bars are not as detrimental in the Raptor as they are on the Hawk. In fact, you'll see we get many decent yellow bar signals. This was actually a soft edge cell, kind of a very drawn out soft edge cell, but it produced on a yellow bar. But we're definitely, definitely sideways. Okay, so here on the Raptor, you could see this as an early cloud crossover or a hard edge bounce. It's just very, 
you know, sometimes you got to step back and kind of see what's trying to happen here. The market tried to move higher. It's not. It's trying to move lower. And you should never feel rushed getting into a trade. There's always going to be another trade. And yes, sometimes you will miss an enormous move. It happens. It happens to me all the time. But there's always another trade. So if this cloud really is crossing over, what we're going to see is we're going to see the market come down. It's going to try to retreat into the cloud, in which case we would expect the cloud to reject it and then come out with a signal. Here, let's see how closely it follows my drawing. We did get filled on the the Falcon and we got would have got filled on this first micro macro cross lower and you can see the Eagle trying to produce the same kind of thing here uh, this is actually a green bar cell on the Eagle even though the band went marginally bullish I would not let that little bit of a flip over deter me. Why? Because remember, whenever we encounter the hard edge of the trading band, we expect some sort of reaction. We were expecting a reaction down here. So we're getting these red bar buy signals, even though the band is slightly bearish. I would not let that negate the possibility of another buy signal. But then when it started to unwind here, then it was, yeah, okay, we're no longer in uh, buy territory. And now we're getting a green bar sell. And again, the band is mildly bullish, but not enough to actually flip things. And then we get the nice move lower. Bill asks, would you consider journaling the difference between the use of the 8 versus 12 tick cloud? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's definitely something that you should be putting in your journal. If you're running uh, different settings, different clouds, that's how we came up with the double cloud. It wasn't, it wasn't me. It was actually Ricardo at the Raptor Forum. And he was playing around with different clouds and recording his results. And he let everybody know, hey, I'm running a dual cloud and it's working out very well for me. Now, I should mention that Ricardo likes to keep um, a much tighter profit target. So when he's looking at his hard edge bounces, very often he's just scalping out. I tend to look for a slightly larger move. But that doesn't negate the value of the signal but yeah definitely you know really the markets are your best teachers if you're willing to pay attention if you're willing to well i don't want to say put in the work that sounds so uh, so menial but a lot of trading is observation you know why did the market why did the market rally here and why did it not rally here? So you look at that and you're looking at your chart and, well, okay, it was kind of sideways and we were just below the primary support line. It was early, right? The market just opened. They tried to do an early rally. They rallied for almost 10 minutes, but it wasn't a very strong rally. Then they came back, and you'll see this. Uh, and again, this is something that you learn by journaling, is that when the market tries to make an initial move and it fails, very often it will try to move the other way. So it, we had a buy signal, which was profitable. And then they came back with a sell signal right away. And we could cover that reasonably well. So it's looking like, okay, we tried going higher. It's not working. Let's try going lower. Let's see if there's anybody on the sell side. And boom, down they go.
And then as you go along, you know, you'll, you'll make certain rules for yourselves. I used to have a rule. I don't any, anymore, but I used to have a rule that I would avoid the signal that would inevitably produce after the first 15 minutes of trading. <laughs> because for a while there, it seemed that the signal was always faking me out. You know, it would give me a buy signal, I would buy, and then the market would retreat, hit my stop, and stop me out. Uh, I don't do that anymore because you do get, you know, some very pronounced moves. But again, my problem at the time was my stops were just too tight. You know, I'd keep my stops... Well, this isn't a very good example because the market didn't back up hardly anything. But my stops would be too tight. So now, you know, I keep my stop back. I play the probabilities. I try to put the probabilities in my favor. Oops. All right, so we got a little bit of a move lower there. And now we're going to see the buyers perhaps try to put in some support. Here on the Raptor, we got a nice wider bar forming, a series of wider bars. Suggesting a little bit more buying activity. Good morning, Jim. Jim says, uh, here's the advanced decline numbers. We got 880 on the buy and only 1760 on, or only 880 on the buy, 1760 on the sell. So the market's skewed to the short side at the moment. One nice thing about day trading is you get a visual of how the market is unfolding. When you're looking at end of day charts, it's hard to, to feel the price activity. So we kind of saw the market laboring to head higher. Then we saw it unfold rather quickly here to the short side. Now they're laboring again. They're trying to get higher, they can't. They're trying to get lower, they can't. Could just be a great big trading range day again today. We'll see if we get a soft edge buy signal here. What I'm watching right now is I'm watching this high, this itty bitty swing high. We may have something resembling a retest of the low. If we can breach this little high, then I may consider this a retest of the low. Otherwise, I would very much like to see the market come down, retest the low, come up short, and give me a higher swing low. That would be nice. The buyer's definitely stepping up here a little bit. 4,600 seems like it's going to be a popular number today. That seems, looks like it's skewering the price activity fairly evenly. We got this little bit of swing above. Let me draw you a line so you can see. So we got a little bit of a swing above, a little bit of a swing below. Right around 4,600, which coincidentally is also the hard edge on our trading band. And let's see where the support and resistance numbers lie. So we're just below the primary support, the median line at 4604. 
So we got a market that's sort of in transition. Kinda sorta. Look at that. <laughs> 45.95. Holding strong. Oh, there we go. Alright, we got a little bit of a break. Uh, good question. Bill asks, why would you be looking for a buy signal when the market just produced a sell signal, a soft edge bounce to the short side? Well, I'm just watching how the market is unfolding. So I'm kind of thinking ahead. It's almost like I don't know if you ever play chess or poker or any of these games where you're always trying to think ahead of the market so I'm thinking all right well if it takes out the high here and then comes down and fails to resume the downtrend then it's very likely going to try to head higher the soft edge sell signal which is this signal right here is a valid signal. It's not as strong as your hard edge signals, however. Your higher probability signals will come off of the hard edge. Unless, of course, the market is in a screaming rally, like it was yesterday, and then you're just not going to get any hard edge signals. But again, you'll kind of get a feel for how the market is unfolding, because these bars just went boom, 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 boom. You could see there was some serious upside momentum. And the problem with taking this trade is not so much where do I get in, but where do I cover? Uh, Daniel's asking, Eric, you said in the Raptor you trade yellow bars or not? Yes, I will trade yellow bars in the Raptor. And my apologies because I know in the manual, uh, the initial Raptor manual, I said to avoid yellow bars. But since then, some of the Raptor owners have shown me the error of my ways. Yellow bars don't carry the same weight on the Raptor as they do on the Hawk because the Raptor also employs elements from the Falcon and the Eagle in the signal generation. Come on, get up there. There we go. All right, so we broke above the 4595, this little itty bitty swing high, just barely. It didn't stay above. The prices rejected going higher so we know there's some active selling right here the market tried to head lower but wait now the buyers are trying to push it up once again and we'll see whether they can follow through with that or not Let's see what the other tools are doing. 
Oh, working on a consolidation pattern here in the in the hawk. If you're following the hawk, you might be saying, "Well, Eric, would I, would you take that macro pullback signal?" Yeah, I would. Where do I cover it though? Right? I don't want to cover it there. That's too cozy. If it is consolidating, it can bounce around a little bit more. At the very least, I would probably look at the crest and the macro line and these highs through here. Ideally. Yes, I know, it's far away, but that's the ideal stop. So let's say we took that one there. And, ooh, just kiss the profit target. If you're running a break-even trigger, you would have been stopped at break-even. But if we get a four-arrow consolidation, we'll have another chance to get in. If you didn't run a four arrow consolidation and if you did not run a profit or a, pardon me, a break even trigger, I would be on the alert now for another move lower. So what we're watching for is we've seen the sellers obviously come down. We produced a macro pullback signal and then the market started to reject it a little bit. Now I'm looking for the sellers to recover the market. We have one bar in our favor. If you were anxious of, about the trade, you could roll your stops here at this point. Effectively, you know, reducing your risk from $240 to, I don't know, what's that look like, maybe about $60 or $70. <sighs> the point is, if the sellers fail to move the market lower, then the market's going to try to head higher again. And there comes a certain point where it just, it's prudent to start to roll your stops. Certainly if this current bar finishes lower, then that's all the reason I would need to roll my stops down here. There we go. So if we can't hit our profit target now, well then I, at the very worst, I want to get stopped here. I could even start to roll my stops above this bar with this nice tall wick to it. Because if they fail, I'm one tick away. If they fail to give me that, I could even go above the high of this bar. So what do we have? One, two, three. We've got our three arrows. We're working on our fourth signal. We may get a four arrow consolidation signal here. All right. Well, you get the idea. I'm going to look at this four arrow consolidation now. I'm going to take it below these double lows right here because that seems to be where the market keeps holding up. I could try to cover the trade a little bit tighter. Once again, the logic is the same that if the market is not going to resume the downtrend, well, it's going to try to trade up through these highs and maybe even challenge these highs here. So I might as well take the early stop out if that's the case. Look at the width of some of these bars here on the Raptor and the Falcon. There's just a whole lot of volume going through these bars and yet nothing to the short side so we'll see if they come back here with a buy signal that would suggest the support's going to hold we're going to see a little bit of a rally i'm not going to say how far the rally will go our target is the hard edge but if we're in a sideways range today we might even recover to the highs
Where's that signal? Come on. The Falcon is giving me an early trench inch signal, but nothing on the Raptor just yet. stop will go below the lows. <clears throat> Come on. You stinkers, where's that signal? Hmm. Well, I suspect they're going to try to slip higher, but they haven't given me the signal just yet. Still got a four arrow consolidation going here on the Hawk, and the four arrow consolidation is the only signal I will take off of a yellow bar. But we've slipped through the highs, therefore I need to keep my stop further back. Again, the ideal stop, way up there. So this is the last chance now for the sellers to get their act together, so to speak. Otherwise, the buyers are going to press the market much higher. Well, a little higher. At least to 4,600, I would say. At the moment, the, the bears do seem to be stronger just based on that move lower that we saw. It seems the buyers are laboring every time they try to press the market up. There's the soft edge buy signal. So we we'll buy into that. And here on the Hawk, we've also got a green bar sell. I'm not going to go contra my Raptor trade, but you could handle this one a couple of ways. You have a green bar sell that you could look to short, or if the signal develops, you could look to take it counter trend as well. No signal just yet, just the warning dot, but something to keep a lookout for. couple ticks late here on the Raptor on the entry, but we do have the buy signal. about to hit the break-even trigger, at which
which time I think I'll go into something maybe like the parabolics. Yesterday's highs at um, one second here. Where did we top out yesterday? Way up there. Forty six twenty one three quarters. If this market is in fact starting to produce a rather large oops, wrong tool. A rather large sideways trading range. Guess where our profit objective is? You got it. Way up there. So the Raptors got a little room to move if I don't get tagged on a reversal here. So our selling attempts on the Hawk, the market moved away from that and now producing a first micro macro cross yes it is a valid signal and it is a scary signal all the same because stops need to go all the way down here yep see you later Bill Bill says he's got to run uh, Robert is asking, Eric, my strategies are grayed out. Do you know why? Yes, sir, I do. Uh, if you go to your strategies window and if you try to make any changes while your trade manager is turned on, you can't. You cannot make any changes to anything. So if you want to make a change to your trade manager, first thing you need to do is disable it. You're going to notice the only one that is not grayed out is your enable tab. This is your on off switch. So if you go to faults, that's going to turn it off. Remember to click apply. And now you can change anything you want. Then when your changes are done, don't forget to turn it back on. So go back here to true that's under enabled click apply and voila all your changes will be in effect uh, Robert says it can't open the strategies try right clicking and pulling down to strategies oh your data feed has to be on you have to have a data feed for your strategies to operate. So make sure your data is connected. And you can right click or you can hit the control S. Control plus S will force the strategies window to open. Uh, getting some rejection now off of the median line here at 46.04. And doggone it, I should have taken my open profit when I had it because we may get tapped here. I'll leave the stops and break even for the moment. Maybe, just maybe, we'll be lucky enough to ride out this swing. If not, we might see the sellers try to take a kick at this and push the market back down. Hmm. 
I'm wondering whether we will see another move. We did breach that support there. It wasn't a significant breach. It was a breach all the same, though. Why is that important? Well, normally when a market breaches a significant support or resistance area, we will see two moves in the direction of the breakout. So that would be move number one. We might see move number two. This is a first micro macro cross. I do need to cover it a long ways away. whole 4600 area being a little bit of a sticky zone. Sticky. Treating from here, I'm not going to adjust the trade just yet, but doggone it, don't tag me at break even again. The eagle a little bit of a mess. Trading punches down and up and down and up into the hard edge. We'll see if they bounce out of there with a sell signal. Hmm. The advanced decline getting a little more even. Just over a thousand on the buy and Almost 1,700 on the sell, so we started at what, almost a negative 900, so very much in favor of the sellers, and now we're only a negative 700, so the buying pressure seemed to be getting a little bit stronger. Got an eye on this eagle here, though. If we get a green bar sell out of that, that could be interesting. Both the buyers and the sellers really drawing up their lines this morning. So we've had the sellers start selling from up here. Buyers buying from down here, both fairly evenly matched. Right? Where if we look at where the resistance seems to be coming here around 4,600, they're fairly even. Now the sellers trying to take over the market and push it lower. We'll see if we get that sell signal. I did get tanked on the break-even there. That's unfortunate. I'll negate this signal here for the moment. It is still a first micro-macro cross. You could still uh, follow this, but it does look like the buyers, or pardon me, the sellers are putting the squeeze on. It 
if that continues though, the buyers aren't going to be able to muster very much out of that. All right, here's the beginnings of our green bar sell signal on the eagle. I guess I should activate my buy signal here. Jim says, it's amazing that the market is even up. Oh, nothing surprises me anymore. <laughs> Just when you think it can't go any higher, it goes higher. When you think it can't go any lower, it goes lower. But what appeared to be momentum early on has all but evaporated. Uh, Bill's asking, thought of another question, and I know you prefer the room over email. Well, just it saves me a whole lot of typing. <laughs> I can also do short videos for you, <clears throat> for those of you who email me questions. Uh, are the hard edge buy-sell signals against the trend just as there are hard edge buy-sell signals with the trend? Well, not so much the hard edge. I know this one developed on the hard edge. It is actually what we would still consider a soft edge buy. It's just that the signal developed a little bit late. Um, let me see if I can find you something that looks a little bit more textbook. Ah, here we go. This is an ideal soft edge cell. It's producing around the soft edge. There's a long ways to go to the hard edge. This would be our profit objective. This is the ideal. But remember what the signal is showing you. You know, it's showing you a market that's in an uptrend, and now all of a sudden we're failing to recover the uptrend, and we come back with a sell signal. So all the parameters are there in the market for, the, for a sell signal to produce. And of course, the nice thing about the counter trend signal, well, perhaps the only nice thing about a counter trend signal, is that you know where you need to cover the trade. And so the market flounders a little bit and then eventually goes down here. Uh, so Bill's asking, so the hard edge signal should be with trend? Generally speaking, yes. So whenever the market encounters the hard edge, we look for it to recover from the hard edge. Now, one of our main signals coming out of the hard edge is the double pullback. So there's one. You could consider that your second pullback. Here comes the market with a signal. So now you're looking at this and you're saying, well, should I take the buy signal? It's supposed to be a high probability signal. Should I take it? Well, if you were already short from here, you wouldn't be taking the hard edge buy. If you didn't take the soft edge sell, you need to be aware that the market may end up failing on this high. Why do I say that? Well, because it's already failed once. So you're looking at this as a hard edge buy, and it is a valid hard edge buy, but now the question is, where do I cover this trade? Well, you could cover it below here, 
I might consider the hard edge. Do you want to know the best place to cover this trade? Way down here. I know. It doesn't seem right, but really that's where you pretty much have to place your stop given the context of the of the market. So if you place your stop there, you're kind of still within the range, especially if the market keeps rejecting the highs. If you place your stop below the hard edge, okay, that's more acceptable because the hard edge would be our target for this signal. So let's say we took this double pullback buy signal off the hard edge. So we're in, the market is floundering, it's struggling, and now it's like, uh-oh. <laughs> and we're going to pretend here for a moment that our stop was far enough away not to tag us out at this point. If we did survive this swing, now is a good time to start rolling your stop, especially these bars with these long tails to them. It's probably a good time to start rolling your stop. Now, you eventually did get tagged, but you were able to reduce your stop or your risk a little bit. Normally, what happens is we should have seen a little bit, another little reaction as the market got down here. We would have got a little bit more of a bounce, and we could have taken our stop and started to roll it and maybe been tagged somewhere around here. But it is a valid signal. However, you need to, you know, you, you cannot totally ignore everything on the left side of the chart. You cannot just say, oh, it's a double pullback, therefore I should take it. And then write me and say, Eric, why did that trade not work out? Well, yes, it should have worked out, but you had the market showing you that, all right, I don't like going above 46.22. There's some definite price sensitivity there. One bounce would not be enough for me to say, let's not take this. But we've got a couple bounces already. And the market, you know, producing a soft edge sell signal and trying to head lower. So it's, it's not an easy call by any stretch. It's certainly one of these trades that's easier to identify in hindsight. If you did take that hard edge buy signal and it fails on you and it stops you out either here or down here, and you're looking back at it, you're trying to figure out, okay, well, what did I do wrong? I was with trend. What went wrong? Well, about the only thing I can point to is this double tap around the 46, 20, 21, 22 area. Notice it did get back up to 46, 20 and then failed. So, like I said, not, not an easy call doing it real time. But yes, normally when the market comes into the hard edge, especially the second band, we anticipate a reaction and a bounce from there. And if we get the bounce, then we look for a higher probability signal. So here we've got, you can see this a couple of ways. You can see this as a hard edge bounce. You can see this as a double pullback. You can see this as a cloud crossover and a pullback. Regardless of how you're seeing it, we're getting a lot of signals here to short. So we could short one of these and then look for the trend to try to resume to the downside. Now, again, initially your, your stop is somewhere up here. The market's heading lower. If you're not all in out with profit, you're trying to run this one out. Okay, now all of a sudden we're rejecting the lows, right? So don't wait for the last second to bring your stop in, especially when you come back with what is possibly a soft edge buy signal. I'm producing a buy signal. I should be in a downtrend. This might be a good time to bring my stop in at least to break even in case the market does a full reversal. So you always need to be aware of what's come before and what's happening now. 
you're going to get to the point where you're essentially going to end up reading the market like a book. Right? Here's a, a cloud crossover. It's a valid signal. Uh, the market seems to be rejecting going lower. It tried to go lower. It's, it's not following through on that. So we can try to go in here with a buy. Where should my stops go? Where should my stops go, class? Should my stops go here? That will be choice A. Should my stops go here? We'll call that choice B. Should my stops go here? That can be choice C or down here. And while you're ruminating on that, Robert's asking, I've been trying to find the settings where to have the data during the early morning hours. That's to say a 24-hour display. Can you help? Yes, sir. So what you want to do, Robert, is you go here to your data series. And where it says session template, Yours may say use instrument settings, which is normally the PIT settings. You want to pull down here to where it says 24.5 or 24.7. The only difference between the two is the 24.7 takes into consideration the very early Sunday morning Globex session, which I would encourage you to avoid. So go with the 24.5, apply your changes, and then you'll have a 24-hour session. What? Nobody's playing? I can't get one person to give me a, a suggestion where I should place my stop. Here, we'll go like this. I'll make it easy. A up here, B, here, C, or D. I won't even call out your names. <laughs> oh, okay, I got a few playing now. All right. A couple voting for B and a couple voting for D. Uh, yes, at least, at least here. I got a few people saying at least, at least this level here. The ideal stop is down here because that's going to give me the most staying power. Right? If the market does make a little hiccup here, it's not likely to go straight down. It is possible, but it's not likely to make a B line there. What's more likely is that it's going to. If it does reject it, come down a little bit, try to go up, at which case then I can roll my stop. And then on this reaction, the market will either resume the downtrend or it will give me one of these and continue higher. I wish they gave me a better shortcut for deleting stuff. All right, so. We'll go with the max low. And now we're dealing with the highs at around the 4604 area, which is also where the median line is sitting here on the support and resistance suite. We do have a buy signal in the Falcon. You could choose to do a second push on this one, knowing the current limit of this bar. You could try to buy it on a second push higher, 
Notice the second push is also going to put us above the high of the last swing. The second push signal is just handy in a market that's going sideways. Or that you suspect may be going sideways. Robert's asking, what's that green line underneath your candles? Is that a stop? No, this is the uh, initial balance lines from Indicator Warehouse. And what the initial balance lines do is they just highlight, I've got it set to highlight the opening range, the first half hour of trading. So I know this was the low of opening range and this was the high of opening range. The logic is that the first half hour of trading very often tends to be the most influential. It kind of sets the, the tone for the day. It's where apparently the people in the know, and I'm using air quotes when I say that, look to buy and sell uh, the market. Oh, we're struggling here. I think I'm going to get my stops in a little bit tighter. I think I'm going to go with this here. In fact, we could make them a little bit tighter still. Uh, it's not looking all that promising right now. Yeah, sure, no problem. Robert's asking, can you show me those data settings again? Sure. I'm going to cancel this trade. So you go here to data series. And here where it says session template, yours probably says uh, user settings or something to that effect. So what you want to do is you want to go down and find default 24.5 or 24.7. I would recommend the 24.5 just because that, those few hours on Sunday morning, uh, you don't want to be trading those. All right, here they come again. Now we're getting a green bar sell. Well, it's actually kind of a real wild morning. Oh, sorry, Robert. Uh, Robert's asking about the balance lines. Yeah, the balance lines, they show the first half hour of trading. So 45.89 half was the low of the first half hour. 46.10 and three quarters was the high of the first half hour. Like I said, the logic is that uh, the commercial traders get their positions on early, usually within that first half hour of trading. And that kind of sets the tone of the day. In other words, if the market retreats back down here to 45.89 half, the commercial interests are going to support their buying. And likewise, if the market gets up to 46.10 three quarters, 
those commercial sellers that were up there are going to su support their selling and try to resist the market. Okay, we got ourselves a rather funky range now. We're getting even more congested than what we were. Now we, we went from a big range, now we're essentially in this teeny tiny range. And of course we've got yellow bars here on the hawk, so we'll ignore that hawk signal. That's trying to print. But I'm not liking where they're sitting right now. All right. So we've, we're already long on the Raptor. However, if the Raptor trades below its current low, it's also going to engage this sell signal on the Eagle. Can I cover it up there? Ooh, I can. <clears throat> so I'm looking for somebody to take this market either the buyers are going to rally it up or the sellers are going to take it lower. If I didn't already roll my stop on the Raptor, if I still had my stop down below this low, if this current bar finishes bullish, I would definitely roll my stop up from down here to here. Why? Well, because the buyers have made an effort to move the market higher. The sellers have tried to knock it down. The buyers have made another effort to move the market higher. The sellers are trying to knock it down. If the sellers fail at this point, well, then I can be reasonably certain the buyers have control and we should see the market continue to move higher. If, however, the buyers fail at this point after trying to rally the market from here, well, then it's reasonable to assume that the sellers have control, which is why I'm looking to enter a little bit early here on the Eagle rather than wait for the ATR to turn over. So we got filled on the short side, got stopped on the Raptor for a little loss. I guess it was a little bit too quick on that trend change signal. The bands weren't fully engaged to the buy side just yet. See, something for my journal. Wait for the Raptor bands to turn over all the way. This is a tight little trading range.
Possible red bar buy here in the Hawk. We're getting the warning dot. I, given the Eagle trade, I don't think I would look to buy it, especially given that we may have our our retest right here of the high. Possible failure. I would be looking to short a failure of it. However, the signal is not complete yet. We only have the warning dot. Possible trend change developing here on the Falcon. And the Raptor actually producing a double pullback. So I could look to short the Raptor also. Let's see if I can catch that on a limit move or a limit order. Yes, I was a little bit, got a little bit cheeky with the market, a little bit too fast on that uh, cloud crossover signal. Nope, they're not going to allow me in. And our signal evaporated here on the Hawk. But the Eagle trade working out not too badly. Well, <laughs> we got a couple bars in our favor anyway. Last chance for the sellers. Let's no, can't use that stop yet. Uh, I think I can go with the parabolics. It should be far enough away to. allow the trade to some room. If they start uh, trending higher here, I may have to pull the stops back to Jim's got quite the uh, the trade going on here this morning. Let's see now. Uh, Jim's watching the YM, so let's pull the mini Dow up here. He said he shorted a confluence of trend lines, and he was counting waves. <laughs> he, he's short at 18.470, so... Oh, actually, way up here. Nicely done. And looking to recover near the low of the day. So his target way down there. Not quite sure how you were shooting your trend lines. Maybe like that. Got a little bit of a channel going on. A little bit of a break here. Ah, I see. Jim's using a 15-minute chart. That's the nice thing about the DTS system. It will work on uh, all chart styles.
Oh, come on. Bears. You threatened to move the market lower, and now you're kind of walking away. Shoot. Okay, let's get those stops in. And uh, I'm going to have to close up the room a few minutes early here this morning. I do have a meeting that I need to get ready for. Um, but overall, I think we can anticipate that the market is going to continue to move sideways today. So caution is in order. It's hard to say whether or not if the NASDAQ swings higher at this point, if we're going to see them try to rally to the highs again. Certainly, I would like to see this bar finish on a bearish note that would give me all the more reason to start rolling my stops in and anticipate the market to challenge the 45.90 low. But obvious support down here around 45.90, obvious resistance around 46 even and then back here at 46 10 46 12 so expect more sideways trading for the remainder of the day and hopefully things will loosen up for us a little bit tomorrow a quick reminder that tomorrow we are at the open house menu at the alternate trading room so i will see you guys then bye for now